Welcome to Swimmer Fans, my name is Composite Energy, and today I'm going to be doing something that I haven't done in a while and that I'm going to start a new theme. And this theme is going to be, uh, I'm going to call it Reign of the Predacons. Now more specifically, it's going to be, it's going to focus, this theme is going to mainly focus on the Transformers Prime uh, Beast Hunters Predacons. Not the G1 Predacons or Beast Wars or Beast Machines or any other Predacons. It's mainly going to focus on the Prime Beast Hunters Predacons. And those figures. So, welcome to part one of Reign of the Predacons. Where I will be reviewing the Transformers Prime Beast Hunters Voyager class. Predaking. Yes, Predaking. The de facto leader of the Predacons. And the only Predacon that... Is, it, is a character in the series. Because uh, the other ones kind of pop up in weird ways. In, in other ways. But Predaking is the one that does appear in the show. And his backstory is... Well, this is very interesting. I like how the, Predacon, the Predacons are portrayed in, in the Prime Universe. Is that basically the Predacons are Cybertron's versions of dinosaurs. They were the, they were the beings that existed, bef that existed on the planet before... Uh, the the Transformers that we all know, and and they lived so long ago that their remains were fossilized. And according to um, Predaking himself in one episode of the show, and I remember it was a really cool line where he was talking to Optimus. Uh, they were fighting, and he says, uh, "How? If I remember correctly, he said something along the lines of, um, how could you possibly defeat me?'" Well, like no, no. It was um. It took a great cataclysm to wipe out the Predacons. What chance do you have? It is a really awesome line that that Predaking had when he was facing off against Optimus. And yeah, Predaking was a very cool character in the show. That I was saddened that he didn't do as much as I would have liked for him to do. Since Beast Hunters, that uh, that season of Prime, the third, which was the third one, Beast Hunters, was um shortened, was a lot shorter than the previous two. Which was a bummer, because I consider that one the best, um, the season, or at least my personal favorite of uh, Transformers Prime. So yeah, here's Predaking, here's his, here's, his, uh, here's his Dragon Mode, and it's really cool. Pretty close, uh, it's pretty accurate to the, um, to his design in the show. Not 100%, but it's still pretty nice. Still looks pretty cool. Uh, for articulation, uh, let's get a close-up on his head. He does have eyes, I don't know if you can really see it, but there's, there's silver eyes. So for articulation, he has a hinge there, hinge there, hinge there, hinge there, and his mouth can open. Mouth can open. All of this is a soft rubber. Same thing with the uh, most of the most of the head and the, the jaw. It's all soft rubber. Let's see, if, uh, I get the show off articulation because it's a beast mode. Can rotate. Uh, can uh, swivel there, there, bend there. The hands are on a ball joint and has two individual hinges for each side of his uh, front claw, so it can open and close. For the uh, back legs, can go up and down, uh, swivel there, bend there and this back knee, and a little bit of up and down, a little bit of movement on the back claw. And then the other part that the other parts that can move are his wings, which have been flopping around because they're a bit loose on my figure. They can uh, there. There and there. Same thing on the other side. And I said they're a bit loose, so it's kind of a pain to work with. But if you get it right, I don't know if this is for all, all copies of this figure, but there you go. I like to have it like that. Um, he does come with two accessories. One of which being this pair of uh, extra heads. Yeah. These are actually, let me take off the missiles. The uh, pretty detailed uh, fire gray fire blast missiles. I'll just put them there. And these are his um his twin I think this is, I forgot what these are called these are like dragon dragon cannons or something but these are basically two extra heads that are cannons and how this is supposed to work oh the uh they're spring loaded mouth so each individual head can actually open and close their mouth and you can move this a little bit and how this is supposed to work is that you pop the missile in like so whoops. It fired like this. for some reason like right before this I may have broken this. Okay, so it's working now. Suppose that you see this lever here. You take this lever, you put it in, you take the lever and you pull it back down, and it'll fire. Oh, it's cool. 
Whoops, and that one just flew off. I will go get that later. And also, uh, the other head does the same thing, but if you notice, you see these little connectors? You can actually connect both of these together, and this will allow for you to fire both heads at the same time. Really neat little feature, so I'll put this in the other head. So that when I pull this one, yeah. So you could fire both weapons at the same, both missiles at the same time. Now let me separate them again, because in order to um, uh, store these, it's actually really neat how it does it in, in, um, in beast mode. Uh, there's these little uh, peg uh, holes right here. I don't know if you can see it, but there's little pegs here on the side of his neck where you can peg each individual head. Um, I like putting the uh, the actual connectors facing outward so it doesn't hit the uh, middle head. So put it there. And there we go, he now has three heads. Which is pretty cool. It, it's a neat little feature. And I think it's really it's a really cool way of weapon storage, even though it is inaccurate as as the Dickens. Cause he cause Predacon does not have three heads in the show. And there you go. That's the only way this stores in a beast mode. It's neat, it's cool. It reminds me of um of a Cybertron Scourge with his three heads. So I will uh put these off to the side and I'll go get that missile later. That fire missile later. So let's get on to transformation. So Predator King is actually pretty straightforward. So first thing you gotta do is come back here and pop off the tail. Uh, this tail ends up being a weapon for his robot mode, so I'll just put it off to the side. And then the next step is to, well, uh, first things first, you take these little pieces here, flip them forward, and they will click into place. It's a soft click, but they'll click into, pray, into place. Then you come down here, fold out the hands, then rotate them. Like so, to get the hands ready. And then, what was the next step? The next step that you're supposed to do is get the wings out of the way. Then come in here, and separate this. These end up being the legs. So come over here. How long did this go? Oh, there we go, just separate it. Separate it. Rotate, rotate the waist. Let me angle this up a bit. He's gonna get a little tall. Have the legs pointing forward. Fold out the foot. Fold this back and put this and fold this in where this right here will peg into here if you can see that. So just rotate this in and this will become the uh, heel. Very, very interesting transformation. Uh, we'll figure that part out later. So this forward, push this forward. See down. Oh, and for this one, because the legs are on opposite ends, for this leg, you have to fold the claw backwards like this, and then peg it in. There we go. And then pegged in. So now we have his his legs ready to go. Whoops. Like I said, we have his legs ready to go. And then for, well, for those, you can do whatever you want with those. So next up, get the wings out of the way again. Put it like so, and for this part, open the chest, feed the, it's supposed to be, no, no, it's the other way, it's the other way, this is backwards, uh, you gotta, uh, crud, hold on, you gotta feed this, there we go, rotate this backward to reveal the head, then rotate the head, put it like so, and then you just cover the head using using, should be using this, like you put the, the, the dragon head in here, it, why is it not doing that, or, oh, no, 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 my bad, you do this, you do this motion, you rotate it back, fold it in, and feed it through like so, and then you make sure you peg this in here, there's like another little, uh, there's a peg here, I don't know if you can see it, peg here that goes into there, so make sure it's like this, then feeding it in there, and pull this up and just push it in, and it'll it'll be like the uh, rubber rubber spikes here. Also, uh, be careful when doing this, cause um the what is it? the rubber spikes will probably get bent if you do this properly. Like it is right there. I wasn't aware of it, but that's the nature of using rubber with a transformer. So putting it there, 
And that's it. This is Predaking in his robot mode, which looks really neat. Really cool. You can't have the wings, you know, spread out, up and out, like actual wings, which still looks pretty cool. But you can actually replicate something he does with his wings in the show, and that's have it be on the side like I was doing. Because he would have his, his wings in robot mode kind of resemble a cape. It would be like this, you know, the more most fingers on the outside. So yeah, we got a close up on his face, and pretty cool head sculpt. He's got nice yellow eyes, or more like gold eyes. I don't know if you can see it. Yeah, but he's got yellowish eyes. Pretty cool. Um, it's not a hundred percent to the show, but it's pretty close. And in terms of articulation, it's mostly the same from the uh, beast mode, except he's got extra points from the uh, his new legs. So this is the same, 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 baldry, baldry, all the same. Head is on a swivel. Legs can do a really, hold on, get the wings out of the way, a really nice kick. And are and universal because they go, they go forward, they go like this, and in and out. You got a really nice knee and rotation at the knee itself. So yeah, he's got articulation for days. Okay, not for days, but he's got plenty of articulation. So, let's get on to his weapons. Uh, might as well get the worst one out of the way, which is the sword. Which, let me get, get a focus on this. There we go. Pretty detailed, pretty nice. However, the, um... How to describe this? He can't hold it. Basically, he can't really hold it. How you're supposed to do it is when you open this up, you can see a little peg there and peg here. Oh, no, I mean right over here. I don't know what I'm looking at. It's over on this side. So what you're supposed to do is peg it like this and close the hand, and this is how he holds his sword. The problem is... He can't really hold it. Like, if you just have him in there, like so, and then close it, I mean, he can hold it fine, but any kind of movement, the moment you start fiddling with it, it'll just pop off quickly. So just be aware of that. Let me try on this hand. It's not like the most, especially on this hand. For some reason, on his right hand, he, he basically can't hold it. He can't hold it on his right hand. He can only do it on his left. So, see if he wants to hold it. And I'll put that off to the side. And there's no real way of storing the, the sword in robot mode. He has to hold it. Or you can do this. Which I think is what I, I've started doing. Just put it like that so he has his, his tail pointing straight up. It looks weird, so I'm just going to have his sword um, put it off to the side. And then we go back to his uh, Hydra Cannon Fire Gun thingies. Which, simple enough, you see his arms, he's got ports here. So you just plug them here. Plug him here, angle his hands a bit, plug him here, plug him here, angle hands, and there you go, he now has dragon heads on his dragon hands, which is, kind of, once again, it's cooler than, than I think, it, it's cooler in execution than on paper, it's actually, it, does, it doesn't look half bad, not to mention these weapons actually stay on pretty tight. And you can just extend them so he's like flamethrowers or something. Kind of reminds me of um, R.I.D. to Inferno a little bit. It's not bad. And you can also combine the two to make an even bigger cannon. Oh, let me get it up. There we go. So now he has the twin fire cannon on one hand. And the his fire tail sword... Because apparently he was inspired by a Beast War since the tails usually became a weapon in that in that in that toy line. He did he can't hold this thing. He can barely hold it. Alright, and there we go. He is posable, so you can get some pretty cool poses. It just thinks that his sword, he can't, he can't hold his sword. And that's pretty much it. So, some facts. I already gave a brief little history lesson about the character and, like, the show that he's from. And, yeah, biggest gripe. 
Um, I don't like that his sword, he can't hold it. He can't hold the sword. I would have I would have liked that he had actual hands or a port or something that he could hold it at least as sturdy as he can his uh oh, let me fix that. As his um as his cannons, as his uh main gun. And unfortunately, he doesn't have any of these weapons uh, in in the show, which is a bit of a bummer. He like, but the thing he doesn't really need them in the show. He uses brute strength and his fire breath when he's in in uh, dragon mode. But um, but um, yeah, it's a solid figure. It's it's a solid figure. I, I can't complain. He's got articulation. The transformation's pretty unique, and it's a really cool design. I'm just bummed out that the sword, he can't hold it. And that's about it, because I even think the, the dragon fire weapon's pretty clever. And I like how he can have three heads in his dragon mode, which pays homage, at least to me, I, I feel that it pays homage to a Cybertron Scourge. Or any other number of three-headed dragons. That I wouldn't be surprised if this character is what inspired the, uh, inspired Dragon Storm in, uh, the Transformers The Last Night movie. You never know. So, um, yeah. Uh, some other fun facts is that this mold was was repainted, as far as I know, twice into other Predakings. Not it wasn't reused for any other of any other character, just Predaking. He had uh, one was a slight repaint in a Toys R Us exclusive double pack with Optimus Prime, where he had a silver head for some reason, and then he had a, an ice blue version of himself, an ice blue repaint called Cryofire Predaking, which was pretty cool. Uh, unfortunately, no pun intended on that one, but it actually looked pretty nice in all blue. Uh, but I personally like this one, because, well, while the blue one looks nice, it's not, doesn't feel like Predaking, and the other one had a silver head, which just looked weird. Although the wings had a black detail, would look nice, but I didn't like that the head was all silver. So yeah, overall, the figure is really nice. I highly recommend it. If you enjoy the um, Transformers Prime figures, I, I see no reason why not to get Predaking. He's great. He's a great character in the show and a great figure. Like I said, don't like that the sword, he can't hold it. And I think it would have been interesting if Predaking in the show would have had some kind of sword. Since they always, since all of the figures have him holding a sword or a gun. Which he didn't use, and which he didn't use any weapons outside of his own... Uh, what is it? Tooth, claw, tail, all of all of the stuff he has in his dragon mode. And um, yeah, that's about it. So yeah, this has been my review of the Transformers Prime Beast Hunters Voyager Class Predaking. And this has been my first part in the reign of the Predacons. This is a Composite Energo signing off. Peace out.